That's where, where my worms live. They eat bacteria. The first worm you found was in something like that. Yeah. I don't think many people thought it was possible to have life as deep underground as we were today. I've heard you uh, have called it worm country. I call it worm country when I see that the conditions are right. I call it worm country. They are really, really resilient yeah. creatures. It's not a big deal for a nematode, for a worm to survive down there. But for science, this is a big deal. Yeah. No one knew that life could no. exist no. in these extreme conditions. That is true. You made a big discovery. Well, in, in the total things in the universe, it's only minor. I mean, you can't call this big. For me, it is big. In the total grand scheme of things, it's just a worm. It's just a worm. <laughs> it's just a worm. <laughs> you were saying that it's a small thing in the universe, but this has you thinking about big things in the universe. How do you make the leap from down there to up there in Mars? Well, I think it's actually pretty direct. I mean, all the elements we know that are important for life are present on Mars as well. The worm has massive implications for Mars because it means if they can do it here, why would they not be able to do it there? I'm not saying that there will be worms on Mars, so it probably will be very simple life forms, but they will be in the subsurface for sure. But you think if a life form could survive in the conditions that you find at the bottom of this mine, mm -hmm. then they could survive yeah, on course. Mars? Of course. I give it better than 50%. I'm taking a risk by saying that on television, but I am convinced that the chances of finding life on Mars are much higher than most scientists are willing to admit. Life always finds a way. Make no mistake.